Hi folks, uh, this is Z-Chip with Contentment. Welcome to another day on the homestead. There have been actually many days on the homestead here since uh, we last talked, and we've been busy. Uh, got a lot of things going on in our lives, but uh, this is the this is one thing I want to show you what's going on. And we've got Dinah here up on some blocks because uh, I've got to do some work on Dinah before I can use her anymore. One leak that I've got that's really really bad is the transmission and it's been leaking for some time I don't know if you can see that transmission fluid right there but yeah this this uh dynaho has actually a two-part transmission you've got this area here which is called the velvet drive it's a shuttle shift it it's responsible for making the thing go forward and back and there's a torque converter in there so it's sort of a semi-automatic uh transmission but then also you've got the gearbox back here this which is an old borg warner gearbox heavy duty transmission uh range gearbox and then back there right there is the uh, emergency brake uh i relined the emergency brake on dyna number one a couple of years ago and installed it along with a rebuilt uh, range gearbox now this gearbox is working fine nothing wrong with it so i'm going to leave it as is but i do want the new brake band off of the old Dyna, Dyna 1, I guess I'd call it, uh, because this one's, you know, it's not working. Uh, and so it's worn out. So I need to do that. As I said, also, I've got, you know, several hydraulic leaks that maybe I can cure up, but mostly I have to drop this, unbolt it from the engine, drop this, and find out why it has such a bad leak. And when I mean bad, I mean bad. This thing is using about two or three quarts of transmission fluid every time I need to use it. Even though it was rebuilt twice last year, the hydraulic steering ram here is still leaking as well. Uh, the engine itself is running great. Uh, I got issues with, uh, you know, old gas tank and ugly gas getting through, but I've got double filters on it and when it runs great, it runs great. Now there's, sometimes it gets, you know, a bad little batch of gas in it and and uh, becomes cantankerous, but it works. What the heck? Uh, Dyna 2 is doing what he needs to do for us. So I'm just going to keep him going, you know, the minimum I need to right now. And then someday, you know, when the house is built and all is over, I might go through Dyna and make her all pretty pretty again or something. I don't know. But uh, right now, we've got to replace an emergency brake. We've got to find, uh, maybe replace a seal in this transmission, drop it, and uh, see what we can do about that steering ram. Uh, you may notice that big blue thing back behind Dyna. Uh, we, you remember, we got this old travel trailer to use for storage since uh, the county will not permit storage containers like this well in uh, in get asking and getting them to reconsider this uh we realized that we can go ahead and have this here for storage temporarily until the house is built so we're in the middle of transferring stuff from the trailer to the uh, container it's a 40 foot container what they call a high cube it's higher than most it's nine and a half feet or something like that tall on the inside so it should serve us well for a couple of years well, it's been a while uh, since I started working on old Dinah here. A uh, few things that needed to be done, I, I think I told you. Uh, one was the transmission. I got the transmission pulled out. This is the shuttle shift, the forward and reverser. Got it pulled out, got the uh, range gearbox pulled out and uh, cleaned up, straightened up, all that good stuff uh there was a the torque converter is right up inside of this housing and i guess the torque converter had a little burr on the uh, part where it rides against the transmission seal which is in here uh the transmission seals in here and so uh it caused the seal it tore up the seal and caused the leak 
So hopefully we've got that fixed. This oil that you see dripping is hydraulic oil for something else I'm working on right now. I'll show you. But um, so I got the range gearbox off. I got the new, it doesn't look like it, but I got the new uh, emergency brake installed. Ouch. Uh, might be easier to show you. Yeah. There's the uh, new emergency brake shoe. Um, and uh, cleaned up the linkage and all that good stuff. Uh, also replaced a brake line, which had smashed. I also got the emergency brake lever working correctly so that I can now adjust it from here. One thing I need to do is, there's this little breather uh, plug right here that I've never bothered to cap off, but I probably should because it was full of dirt. Uh, so I'll cap that off with a hose and a bolt. Uh, I think on these old engines, it used to run from here over and would tie into an air cleaner in a more modern vehicle than this. Um, as you can see, this is an oil bath air cleaner. There's really no place to install that hose, that breather hose. Uh, so I'll just plug it and be done with it. And then uh, we'll do an oil change. We'll add some uh, new hydraulic oil and some new transmission fluid, the gearbox fluid, and uh, get to uh, get Dyna running. And this is sort of normal wear and tear, but this here, this valve right here, little spool valve, hydraulic valve, that uh, operates the loader bucket, which is, that's the loader bucket. And uh, there are little seals that go in those holes. See that blue one? That's, that's the incorrect seal for it. But there are seals that go in those holes that, um, you know, keep this thing from leaking. Well, as you can see with all the crud around it, it's been leaking. So it took me some time, about a month, to uh, locate the proper seals for this thing. <clears throat> but we'll get those installed, get this back together, get the dash plate back on that holds the steering wheel and all that good stuff. And uh, get Dinah going because Dinah's got some work to do here before the year's out. Isn't that right, Reba? Dinah has a lot of work to do, doesn't she? Dinah's got work to do, huh? Why are you cowering, huh? <laughs> Reba, you're so funny. Hi. You a good dog, huh? Are you a good dog? Huh? Are you a good dog? Are you a good dog, Reba? You sure are uh, relaxing, aren't you? Yeah, you like to relax, don't you? Maybe later, if you want to, you could go for a ride with me on Dinah. Would you like to do that? Want to go for a ride with Dinah? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> little grease, little persuasion with a blunt uh, tool so you don't booger up the seal. And they're in there. Now, there are some retainer plates that go on this side. Let's get this backhoe put back together. Well, I'll tell you, if it's not one thing, it's another. I was getting ready to button up Dinah, get her going. You know, I put the dash and the firewall and the steering wheel back in place. And uh, I was down underneath just making sure everything was buttoned up and tight. And I discovered that this steering box is leaking. It's like, great. So now, I've, as you can see, I've started to unbolt it. I'm going to take it off. I've got to separate this plate. It's leaking right in between here. And I have a rebuild kit for it. So I should have the seal I need. So I get that put back. But, oh, what a hassle. You know, you thought you had something done and then two new things show up. The other thing is, uh, I had to move this oil filter back to its original position. They had it bolted to... That little piece of metal up there with the holes in it is way too far forward. It's supposed to bolt to the side of the transmission. I don't know why it was ever removed from there, but I grabbed the bracket off of Dyna One and I uh, I repositioned this oil filter canister where it should be. Now that makes this you know return hose or supply hose a little you know U shaped as you can see. I can live with that. But then I, I realized that, the, you know, the original, the hose that was on here was not long enough, so I had to find a longer hose. I grabbed one from Dyna One 
because I had one that because the original dying was positioned. So I just grabbed that hose and put it on here. But now I see that it's leaking. See that drip right there? So I have to replace this hose. There we go. Let's see. That's a swaged fitting that's pressed on, so it's not reusable. It's a shame. Because that's a nice piece of metal. Nice fitting. Okay. Now that we got that hose on, see it? We can turn our attention to this oil filter. And I already did an oil change. Um, I didn't replace the oil filter because on one of these industrial engines, it's not something you need to do every time. Um, uh, seems like these old Continental engines can run on dirty oil or even no oil for half their life and be just fine. I don't know why. But um, so I did do an oil change and I put some fresh zinc additive in here. They're very important for an engine with flat tappets where the valves are to uh, preserve those. But uh, now let's turn our attention to the oil bath air filter. Um, you know, nowadays we're used to air filters being a paper element, sort of, you know, fan shaped paper element. But uh, before that, there were oil bath uh, air filters, and this is one. Dumpy also has one. And um, basically what happens is the air is sucked through a bath of fresh oil. And then any of the dirt and things like that are, are um, you know, left in the oil and fresh air comes out the other end and into the engine. Uh, I've, you know, there seems to be uh, two schools of thought on this. One school says, oh, you can't get better than an oil bath filter. And other people say that el uh, paper element filters are better. I don't know. I just decided to go with this. Um, a, uh, I guess it didn't really make a difference because a quart of oil, that takes about a quart, a quart of oil and a, um, and a quart of oil is about what, four or five bucks, but a, a new air filter for this thing would be like 20. Now, old Dyna has a brand new paper element. I don't know, depending on how this works, I may decide I want to switch it out for the, uh, you know, for the other style of air filter. I don't know. But uh, let's take a look at this oil and see what it looks like anyway. Okay, well this is the inside. I just pulled the bottom bowl off of this thing. The inside, and there are the holes where the water, where the air gets sucked through. Um, actually, it gets sucked through these holes, comes around underneath and through this big hole and out to the engine. But the oil itself, you can see, is fairly clear, clean. It got some water in here probably from a rain at some point because you know there are holes in the side of that you get a driving rain in there and you get water but uh, let's pour it out and see what it looks like I happen to have a uh, bucket here that I can pour into so let's see yeah it looks pretty clean I probably didn't need to change it except for that water that got in there and a few bugs so I'll pour some fresh oil in there clean it up and Send it back in there. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Oh, no, there's some dirt. And yeah, there's some dirt in here. I collected it. Yeah, we got some dirt in here. So it's doing its job. Keeping a lot of dirt out of the engine. That's good. But uh, we got to get this water out of here. All right, clean it up. Okay, let's revisit this. I'm sticking my hand in here. There's a ton of sludge in the bottom of that. See, it's just, it's really fine dust. You know, probably from out here working. It's almost like mud. Okay, well, I'll clean this up real good. Put new oil in it. Okay, well, I just let that soak in some parts cleaner for a little while. And then washed it out. <laughs> there was a lot of really fine dirt in there. Mud. Maybe, maybe a quarter of an inch in the bottom of this. And then there was also some in this track. So... Well, the, the oil bath filter is doing its job. It's catching the dirt. And, I mean, let me see. The last time, and I'm pouring some fresh oil in here. Um, and by the way, I just use plain old cheap 30 weight oil. You don't have to buy expensive oil. Get the cheapest oil you can um, for this because it's, you know, it's just a filtering product. Not using it for anything. But it takes a quart and uh, enough to fill that bottom thing and then also fill this track a little bit. See? That way it does a proper job of filtering. But, um, yeah, I've only, let me see. I changed the oil at something like 75 hours, and I think it has 175 or 
180 hours on it, something like that right now. The backhoe does since I put the new engine in. So there's only 100 hours. When you think about it, that's nine eight-hour days. Um, I'm sorry, uh, 12 eight-hour days, roughly. Um, and so that oil got dirty fast. But you have to understand, it's a backhoe. <laughs> it operates in a dirty environment. And uh, so, yeah. So you can expect to get dirtier than, say, a, an automobile filter. Um, having said that, I probably could have gone a lot longer uh, without having to change the oil and, uh, you know, in this filter. So that's good to know. It's good to know I can get probably a couple hundred hours out of a quart of oil for filter. So I'll put this back in. Next, let's turn our attention to the antifreeze the coolant. Make sure we got some coolant in here. No, we need to add some. Okay, just mixed up, mixed up some coolant. I'm old school. I don't buy the 50-50 stuff. I'm too cheap. Uh, I, I buy the, the regular old concentrate and I mix it with water. Remember, don't let the dogs drink this stuff. Look at this, I may have figured it just right. Oh, man. Just almost full. Okay, well, it takes care of most of the maintenance on Dumpy, I mean on uh, Dyna. Just one more thing that needs to happen. I need to go through and grease all the fittings and stuff like that, but I can't do that until after she's up and running because I need to articulate things to reach grease fittings. Anyway. And one other thing to do is to work on that power steering motor right there and find out why it's leaking, break out the uh, rebuild kit I've got for it and fix what needs to be fixed, put it back together so we can get her running. Because uh, I got a lot of stuff to do and Dinah is at the center of just about everything we need to get done here at Contentment. So she's been down too long and uh, need to get her running again. Well, it's been a few days since the last time I recorded anything. Turn your attention back to this uh, uh, hydrostatic steering on the backhoe. As you can see, I got the pump out and I figured out the problem. When I was bolting that whole dash back together and everything, it looks like I, I unevenly torqued the mounting screws that held this on and I broke this flange and it's leaking a lot. So uh, I'm fortunate in that uh, there is a company out of Kansas City called Midwest Directional that happens to have a bunch of these old pumps laying around because you got to keep them in this thing's about 50, 60 year old technology right here, maybe even older. Um, and uh, there are no numbers on it or anything, no identifying numbers. I know it's an Orbitrol, but a lot of uh, manufacturers made this style of Orbitrol. Anyway, I think it's a pretty standard issue kind of thing. Um, although I don't know the particular pressures, you know, for this uh, spool valve or, you know, anything like that. But I was able to give them some sizes. I, I ordered a new one. They had a used one sitting around in good shape for about 30 bucks. And then I got a rebuilt kit for 30 bucks. I'll, while I've got this out, I'll take it apart, clean it, and, and put new seals in it since I've got it out, you know, just while, you've, while you're doing something like that, best to just take care of it before you put it back because you don't want to have to go to all the toil and trouble of having pulled that out just to fix one thing and then something else starts leaking. So anyway, but while I'm waiting on that part, I've turned my attention to Rusty because lately Rusty's been getting some really bad gas mileage and uh, he's been throwing engine codes and stuff like that and then at rough idle and it wants to die and you know, things like that. This is a really good engine. This is a Ford 300, um, which is one of the best engines ever made. However, you know, in recent years, they've thrown all kinds of, you know, emissions and fuel efficiency stuff on it. They've added, um, you know, fuel injection. You know, it's funny because this engine 
was rated for in in this truck was rated for 25 miles per hour when it had a two barrel carburetor on it and when they switched the fuel injection it went down to 20 miles per hour so go figure so much for fuel injection anyway with fuel injection comes a whole new set of things like a computer uh you know airflow controls exhaust gas controls uh you know just all kinds of stuff and so those things get dirty this is the uh air cleaner this is the air intake hoses and there's the actual throttle body right there this is an idle speed control which was i removed and was dirty so i put it, i cleaned it and, and i also cleaned the electrical contacts that's important and i put the put a new gasket on and put it back i also took some throttle body cleaner and cleaned out the inside of the throttle body and wiped it out real well uh i also cleaned the contacts on this uh throttle position sensor and now i've turned my attention to that back there that's the exhaust gas recirculation valve and that's probably the culprit that's causing the codes these things are good for about 50 to 100,000 miles and then you either have to clean them or replace them same thing with a pcv valve which is just underneath it i replaced the pcv valve a couple of years ago but while i've got this off i'll check it um but uh, exhaust gas recirculation takes some of the gas that comes out of the exhaust and throws it back into the intake uh, to reburn it. Uh, it's really more than more than a, an emissions thing. It is a fuel saving feature because uh, it allows you to reburn the nitrous oxide and the fuel that doesn't get burned the first time. So uh, anyway, uh, it was a bear getting that loose because that intake uh, hose or pipe right there as you can see uh, that thing is rusted this these threads were all rusted I had to throw some WD-40 in there and just let it sit for a long time these uh, bolts going to, are rusted so even though they screw into aluminum so it's been a bear trying to get that out but I finally got it all loose I'm going to pull that out and clean it test it make sure it's okay Okay, here's the EGR valve. Oh, by the way, Reba's my helper today. She's my moral support. Anyway, here's the EGR valve. And uh, it's got electronics on it because uh, it sends a signal, depending on the position, a little plunger in here, it sends a signal to the car's computer to let it know how much how much ga uh, exhaust it's, uh, it's allowing back into the engine. Uh, but I don't know if you can see it down in there try to get in the light where there we go right down in there i don't know if you can see it there's a little uh stick and a plunger and that operates off of engine vacuum so when it when it pulls back like this in this direction well let me show you well, let me set the camera somewhere okay. so when when vacuum pulls that plunger this way a little diaphragm and plunger it opens up this valve inside of here and allows exhaust gas to go through into the engine if this gets stuck open because it has deposits or you know gunk or whatever in it from exhaust then exhaust gases are always going through to the engine and that's not necessarily a good thing there are only certain times you want it in there anyway this one's operating properly just needs a good cleaning so I will take some carb cleaner. I will probably just fill this little cavity up here and let it sit for several hours like that uh, to get all the deposits off of there. Uh, so in fact, last night when it was running, I sprayed some WD-40 right around this location and the engine slowed down, which tells me there's a leak here. So I've got a new gasket to replace it. And uh, so we'll get this cleaned up and get a new gasket on, put it back on. Okay, so we got everything put back. I turned on the engine after I cleared the codes. It's still throwing the same codes. Back down underneath there is a solenoid that operates this thing connected by a vacuum hose. So when the solenoid opens, it allows engine vacuum to come up here and operate the valve, okay? I've tested the vacuum. There's no problem with the vacuum system. Uh, I've tested the valve, it's fine. The only thing I can think of is that this position sensor has to be misreading what's going on well we fixed rusty and we got we were able to clear the engine codes uh, we found the culprit it was this position sensor 
that is bolted to the EGR valve. When I tested the voltage with a multimeter on those terminals there, uh, it, was, it was showing uh, that the voltage was in proper limits. So I thought, okay, well, then where is the problem? Because I can't seem to find it. But this little plunger, you know, records. But you see the way that that thing is moving in there? That whole thing? That was the problem right there. It's supposed to be sealed against this. Uh, and apparently it's rattled loose or something. And was giving faulty readings to the computer, which was causing the engine to run really rich. And uh, using a lot of gas. Burning a lot of gas and throwing codes. So, uh, we got it fixed. I'm so thankful. So, you know, for those of you who think that with modern vehicles, these things are too hard to work on, diagnose, that kind of thing, there's plenty of help on the internet for you, especially on YouTube and in other sources. Um, but, um, I mean, that's where I was able to get the voltage information on this. But uh, you can do this. You know, altogether, diagnosing this and fixing it has taken a total of about four hours worth of work. And out of it, I got a nice clean valve, nice clean throttle body. I've cleaned all the sensors and electrical connections. So, I mean, I wound up doing some maintenance at the same time, and I found the problem. It's doable. Um, I don't want, I don't think anybody should be intimidated by a new car and all the stuff that goes into it and then be roped into, um, you know, a costly repair bill from the dealer or whatever, because... You know, this part cost me $38. And then I bought a couple of cans of cleaners. Those were about 10 bucks each. And a gasket, which was $3. So, you know, for about $60, I was able to repair the In four hours' time, I was able to repair this myself. But had I taken it to a dealership or another place and had them spend time diagnosing it, that kind of thing would have been $100 an hour plus the part, and they would have doubled the price of the part so they make money on it. I mean, I would have been out $400 um, plus $500 just fixing this little part and doing a little cleaning. So anyway, uh, just to encourage you, now i got to get on the, the Dodge because it's acting up. Okay, well, here we are. <laughs> Another installment in our uh, continuing saga regarding uh dyna i'll tell you i spent spent a great part of this year just working on this thing and getting nothing done with it it's getting very frustrating anyway wound up having to buy a new steering box for this thing uh the other steering box i got a flange for was able to fix it uh, but i could not get it to work and uh Stuck it on, and the thing just would not work. It would not steer the wheels. And so I thought, what have I done wrong? I sent it off to the company that provided the flange, the replacement flange for me. They said, we put it on, on our machine. It works fine. I have no idea why it's not working for you. You have a couple of choices, though. I mean, this thing's worn out. Naturally, it's 60 years old. Uh, the spool inside uh needs to be replaced just because it's worn and the body has a tiny crack in it which was leaking oil um so tiny that i never noticed it and he said you know we can we can rebuild the thing and put those two things in it for you and send it back for a certain amount or for 30 dollars less we have a brand new replacement sitting on our shelf i said send me the replacement so there it is uh so we got that in and then we got the thing started up and running and got it off its blocks and you know the the thing that started this all was a transmission leak and the transmission continues the leak i have no idea why but i gotta find out uh so guess what i get to do i get to pull that transmission off all over again lucky me huh so that's the deal with uh, Dyna. It's, uh, like I said, very frustrating. We've not been able to get anything done this year that we needed uh, to do uh, involving, you know, the backhoe. And so, uh, like I said, very, very frustrating. 
I've got, just in case, you know, I've got another shuttle shift right here in the range gearbox off, off of Dyna 1. That's rebuilt. It's just covered with oil and sand. But, uh, you know, maybe the easiest thing to do would be to just put this in and uh, hopefully be rid of this uh, problem, leaking problem. Because I know that this uh, shuttle shift works fine. So maybe that'd be the easiest thing to do. And uh, so that'll be up next. But, uh, you know, I'm going to conclude this video with this because this is going to take some time to do. And like I said, it's just very frustrating. This year has been very frustrating because we've been mostly fixing and working on stuff. Uh, vehicles and this and uh, dumpy uh, because, you know, the, the environment out here, the roads especially, just tearing stuff up. But uh, anyway, oh, enough of my whining. We'll go for now.